Joe Bosano became Chief Minister of Gibraltar in March 1988. His first year in office was not an easy one. In internal Foreign and Commonwealth Office documents, officials discussed bilateral relations with Spain and how they were affected by Joe Bosano's constant refusal to attend the Brussels process or discuss the question of Gibraltar paying for Spanish pensions, which the UK had been doing up until then. In one internal memo, an official called Gordon Lennox said, There is a sense of genuine irritation at Bosano's actions and attitudes in Spanish official circles. And Spanish officials and journalists to whom we talk are beginning to ask how far Her Majesty's government will let the Chief Minister go towards destroying the Brussels process completely. At the same time, Whitehall was secretly discussing the withdrawal of MOD assets from Gibraltar, a move which was part of the wider forces of the structure and would inevitably have an economic impact on the rock. In his memo, Lennox suggested that, in order to minimize fallout with Spain over the issue of Gibraltar, the garrison withdrawal should be presented by UK ministers as a major positive gesture to Spain. But in his reply to this letter, the governor, Sir Peter Terry, didn't think trying to coerce Joe Bolsano was a good idea. He quoted something Mr. Bolsano had said to him in a private conversation. If I have to choose between living on a crust of bread behind a closed frontier and paying for Spanish pensions, I will choose the former, and every Gibraltarian will agree with me. In the event that Joe Bolsano refused to attend Brussels talks, the Foreign Office considered extending the invitation to the then leader of the opposition, Adolfo Canepa. As the next round of Brussels talks approached in November 1988, the Foreign Office discussed the possibility of inviting Mr. Bosano to the table once again. And if he refused, the invitation would then be extended to the then leader of the opposition, Adolfo Canepa, with the UK picking up the expenses. Sir Peter Terry said he was attracted to the idea, although he wasn't sure if Mr. Canepa would accept. In the end, the idea was abandoned because of the risk that the majority of Gibraltarians would probably be behind Mr. Fosano and see this as an attempt to go over the head of their elected representative. The governor himself represented Gibraltar in the talks. The UK was also deeply concerned about Mr. Vosano's foreign visits. The first of these was a trade mission to Hong Kong, which at the time was a British colony. A second trade mission took him to Washington, and the third was a meeting with José Caracao in Cádiz. The Foreign Office was possessive of its responsibility for Gibraltar's foreign affairs and even took legal advice to see what it could do to stop Mr. Bosano making diplomatic visits. They urged the governor to keep tabs and report back on what Mr. Bosano was up to. Two years into Mr. Bosano's term of office, the UK cabinet held a meeting where the Foreign Secretary told his ministerial colleagues, including the Prime Minister, that both Britain and Spain found the attitude of the Gibraltar government towards Brussels irritating. Up until now, this language had only been used to describe how Spain felt, not Britain. This story shows the importance of not looking at any one of these documents in isolation. You have to look at them in a timeline, so to speak, because if we had picked out one individual document, we would have seen a very different Joe Bosano to the one we saw in the cabinet meeting minutes a few months later.